Gilbert Ash recently completed the Mayhew Theatre, um, which was a, a diplomatic academy um, lecture theatre um, located down at the, the Foreign Office um, in Whitehall in London. Um, the building was to be a, a newly constructed building um, to be situated within a Lightwell courtyard um, of the existing Whitehall um, building down in London. It's a high status, if you like, high status, high profile facility and it's been one of the biggest investments in the Foreign Office here, estate in, in London in quite a while. Back in March, the Duke of Cambridge opened the Mayhew Theatre. Um, it was named in honour of Baroness Mayhew, who was the first British female diplomat. Um, it was quite a complicated project due to the nature of the design that was given to us by the client. So we had to break down the different elements of the project and provide a competitive bid um, that was supported by our supply chain. All our subcontractors had to buy into the project, understand all the constraints, um, and then we had to decipher what was the best route to take to deliver the job. Gilbert Ash's role and responsibility on the project was not for just the construction but to complete the contractor design portions um, that were set by the client. Essentially the superstructure of the building was um, a cantilevered hyperbolic paraboloid top ring beam uh, with a zinc roof, um, everyone lovingly referred to it as the Pringle. Um, and then with that you had a, a non-true oval base ring. Um, which would bear the loading of floor to ceiling glass, glass walls. Um, so you had these glass panels that um, curved over two planes, horizontal and vertical. Um, within the building you had a, an elliptic paraboloid cedar slat ceiling also. Um, so you've got these very complex geometric shapes and it makes it even more complicated when they're all in, interacting um, and intersecting with each other. Um, in order for us to capture on-site dimensions and set out dimensions on-site, um, the only way that we could see to do that was to capture that in 3D. So Gilbert Ash fit out, um, invested in the, the software and the hardware that was required for accurately capturing this 3D data. We were one of the first people in, in Northern Ireland um, to invest in the, the Leica BLK360. We used that to capture our 3D point cloud data um, and once it's captured we were able to extract that data and use that within Revit, um, Tecla and Navisworks. With our 3D models that we had developed we were able to use Navisworks um, as a coordination tool. Um, this helped us to easily identify clashes between all three disciplines um, and we could hold workshops uh, with the, the subcontractors. Um, to develop um, methods um, and changes to the design as the, the building was still progressing during its construction phases. The construction process involved a lot of consideration for all the works packages. Everything had to be meticulously thought out um, off-site by using digital construction methods. Um, we pre-erected the steel frame so we could verify the sizes for the glass were going to be accurate before it was manufactured and sent to site. Due to the, the long lead time and the high cost risks um, for the, the purchasing of the, the glass um, as it curved over two planes, we had to order that before the, the steel superstructure was fabricated and constructed on site. At each stage of the, the, the fabrication um, of the steel superstructure, we were able to accurately take measurements um, from the, the mock erection. Um, down to the, the on-site construction and the removal of props. During that phase of the removal of props, we were able to identify that the, the cantilever top ring beam was deflecting more than what it theoretically should have, um, which meant that the glass that had been ordered was not going to fit um, between the base ring and the top ring beam. With the, the architect and the structural engineer, um, we were able to change that design um, to and install extra st structural stiffeners, um, which meant that the, the glass would, would now fit within the tolerances. Um, without carrying out that exercise, um, we could have been in a situation where both ourselves and the client would have had financial risk. So I know that there were various challenges, uh, mainly due to 
The Foreign Office building being very historic and hist historic England you know, had certain criteria and parameters that Gilbert Ash and other stakeholders had to work within and I know that one of those things was this is a brand new building in a courtyard and it wasn't allowed to touch the existing historic parts of the, the building. Apart from the difficulty with the, the actual geometry of the building itself, it was the logistics um, of the, and the location of the, the new theatre. It was um, situated within the courtyard, um, which was 90 metres um, away from any, any road access that we had. Um, so the building went through different um, phases of how we were able to, to construct that off-site and then create it into site and the location. There was no area for storage, um, so everything had to be created in modules and then craned into position. Um, and it was with great difficulty, as I said, you've got 90 metres from any access and it's 30 metres down a Grade 1 listed uh, English Heritage building. Um, and you maybe had about five, five metres on each side of that um, as you're craning this building in. It's crazy. It's, um, it's a state-of-the-art building and we've never had a space as big of, as this before dedicated to learning and development. So it's a real flagship piece, not just because of its modern design that is really aligned to the ethos of the Diplomatic Academy because we're using innovative um, learning techniques, if you like, so the building goes with that. Um, but it's very high quality, People that come along uh, for learning activities in it, um, feedback has been positive um, so far. It's been used on a day-to-day -day basis. It allows us to interact with the global network in a way we've never been, allow been able to before. So the fact that it hosts large numbers of people and it's got some really, really innovative technology so we can video conference our post services, we can have you know, 250 people uh, dialing in to an event. So that means that we can deliver virtual learning at a pace and in a bigger scope than we've ever been able to before, making our learning much more inclusive um, to our staff right across the globe.